So the, the fourth expression of Aries was attainment. And the 20th degree of Aries was this girl just feeding birds, because that's the right thing to do. And we discussed ether and the, the state of grace where all four elements are in balance. And now we come to the fifth expression of Aries, which is called progression. And we find this very strange image in, in the context of what we've studied so far. Aries 21, the pugilist, the fighter. It just seems so out of context of where we have come. This guy gets into the boxing ring and, and says, come at me, I can beat you down. It seems so unspiritual. And I think that's the whole point, that the, the idea that we can actually simply go through a process, get to this level of attainment, and that's it, job done. That's not true. The job is never done. It's bigger than that. The journey that we have is eternal. Think about that. Eternal. It's not going to end. We're not looking for a result here. We're looking for something, and we use the idea of a result to motivate us towards achieving that something. And we did that to get to Aries 20. We, we got to the level of attainment where we just do the appropriate thing, automatically, as it were, because we're in that state of ether. And now we're going into the ring again, because that's the way it is. Once you've got to a certain height, then you go down. It's like climbing a mountain. You, you don't climb up a mountain. You go up and down and up and down. There are foothills. And it's like that with this journey through eternity towards realization and beyond to enlightenment. So here we have the journey of the pugilist. He's just saying, look, I really want to get this right. I want to go into self perfect perfection, perfecting myself to the ultimate level. And to do that, I need examination. I want to take on all of the challenges that I can, and I want to win. Now, that aggressive attitude to life is best turned within. It's not really a good expression of the energy to go around picking fights with people in bars. That would be Aries 21, but not a very enlightened expression of it. No, the fight that you need to have is with yourself. You need to take on all of your imperfections as though you were in a boxing ring with them. And I have identified within myself two prominent aspects, shall we call it. But I... Um, anthropomorphize them. I, I make these two energies within me into people, as it were. Um, and one of them is the dervish and the other is the troll, actually. Not actually a person, but... Um, so I've got the dervish and the troll. And the dervish is all goodness and light and service and prayer and spiritual and so on. And, and there's that to me. I, I can do all of that and I enjoy it. And then there's this troll part of me that likes to get drunk and be gross and um, eats too much and, and, and is rude and, and so on. And the troll is continually talking to the dervish and saying, I know you don't approve of me. And the dervish saying, well, I am fucked. <laughs> You're fine. I like you, you know. And so there's this battle going on all of the time within me. And I found it very useful to externalize this inner fight that's constantly going on within me, uh, where the troll is, is, um, knows it's doing something which is kind of a bit gross and, and, and lower chakra distortions, you know, and is expected to be told off by the dervish, and the dervish is, is just like, that's life, you know, I'm okay with it. And these two parts of me are, are always in conversation, and sometimes I even externalize the conversation and, and, and um, have the fight going on. And they can't win, they can't lose. This you can't win and you can't lose. You've got to get that. We do have a constant battle in life, and it's eternal. You can't win and you can't lose, and then you can't stop. 
it's the nature of things that we're just conflicted. And that sounds negative, but it's not. It, it, the yin-yang symbol shows this really clearly, the conflict between the dark side and the white side is dynamism. That's the Tao. And you can soften and soften and soften and soften the conflict until all is graceful. And, and then you see that conflict is simply harmony. If you put a song together and you have just one note, it's kind of all right, but it's a bit boring. You put in another note and it's just like, oh, okay. On the face of it, it's a conflict, two different notes, but they can be enriching the harmony of the melody. It's the same with art. You put two different colors together, and if they can harmonize well, then the conflict between the difference of the colors actually moves it to a greater level of attainment. So we're talking about that level of progression. Constant, eternal moving forward requires conflict. And the pugilist owns up to that, knows that, does not look for harmony in a situation, looks in every, situa in every situation out there for the conflict, and actually, with wisdom, understands that that represents an inner conflict that has to be dealt with. So, um, the contrast to that is the, the gate to the garden of desire. And um, whereas the pugilist struggles against everything to, to find the, the way towards self-perfection in this Aries kind of fiery Mars cardinal way that Aries is like. And the guard, gate to the garden of desire is just the opposite principle, the, the second degree of an expression, the opposite principle. It's just like, open the gate, just go in and you will find all of your desires met in abundance. There it is. You don't have to struggle like the pugilist. Just surrender. Open the gate. You have to open the gate. Knock and the door will be opened. Seek and you shall find. There is a little bit of wisdom in the Bible. Not very much, but a little bit. So open the gate and you will find the garden of desire. That's all you have to do. And if you only ever did that, you just casually walked through every gate that you found and you found abundance, everything you wanted there, there would be a part of you that would get bored, the pugilist part, because this idea of conflict is actually very entertaining. Um, we, we, we like that energy. And if you think about sex, sexual union, physical union between a man and a woman, it's not all harmony. It's a little bit of a fight. It's Venus and Mars in sex. The Venus wants everything to be harmonious and lovely and loving and so on. And Mars is, is just a little bit of friction, you know. And it's not only the men that introduce that at all, you know. So this little bit of fighting that goes on in sex. And if, now oh, I saw the best image of this ever in a film about, let me get this right, uh, the dark side of the moon, Pink Floyd, where a visual image of um, flowers interacting turned into a couple having sex and creating a baby. And it was a, a constant battle between harmony and conflict. That's the nature of life. So this is reconciled in in this image of a pregnant woman, the, the next degree, the 23rd degree of, of Aries, is a woman, heavy, burdened with a heavy load, and Rudyard calls this the pregnant woman. She's dressed in pastel colors. So she's not looking for a fight. She's got a baby to look after. But she's constantly burdened and, and, and having to deal with the challenge of the conflict, the inner conflict. She's herself and the baby is not her. So the baby wants all her food. She has to eat more to feed herself because the baby's taken all her food. 
and the baby's kicking her from inside and the baby's giving her pain when it's being born. This is not harmony. And yet she's dressed in pastel. She's trying to calm herself down to make that harmonious. So you've got this reconciliation occurring between the, the two, the conflict and the, the garden of desire. She wants the baby, you know, and it was desire that gave rise to the baby in the first place. And so she moves herself into this expanded state of being, the open window, the window allows the wind in, the wind is spirit, and makes the curtain into a shape of a cornucopia. Cornucopia is abundance, the horn of plenty. And she's open now to spirit. She can't really do very much. She's carrying a child. And now she moves into the 24th degree and she's just open to what comes. And what comes is spirit. And um, she has the, the Aries 25th vision of, of absolute optimism. She wants everything that she can possibly have for the child. And the double promise here in Aries 25 is the promise not only for the child's abundance and joy, but for her own because she's one with the child on one level. So the image in Aries, this batch of um, progression in Aries, um, it's got a feminine side to it, isn't it? And this is how you move forward. You're trying to balance the masculine and the feminine. 